Okay. Uh, thank you, guys, for uh, joining me on this panel. I'm uh, so happy to see all of my panel members. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just introduce the topic first to say that this is a topic which is strengthening VC capabilities. Uh, my name is Jayesh Parik. I'm the uh, co-founder of uh, Sony Entertainment Television. I'm also a senior advisor and uh, to Jungle Ventures. And uh, I'm on the investment committee of uh, three of Avishkar Capital Impact Funds. I'm also an angel investor and an angel impact investor and on the advisory board of Akhand Jyoti Eye Hospital. I live in Singapore and I spend a lot of time in India, of, of course, except in the last four months. So may I please now request each panel member to take a minute or two and introduce themselves as I call their names. Can we start with Ganesh, please? Uh, thank you, Jayesh. Thanks for having me here. Uh, my name is Ganesh Rangaswamy and I'm co-founder and managing partner of Kona Capital. Now, Kona is uh, arguably the most active uh, emerging market fintech VC, and we focus on inclusive uh, uh, fintech and financial innovation and invest across Asia, Africa, and Latin America. In India happens to be one of our most um, you know, active geographies. And uh, you know, before Kona, I've been a technologist, entrepreneur, um, and venture, venture capitalist in the, in the Valley before moving back uh, to India to start Kona and get into impact investing. Thanks, Jay. Thank you. And can I please ask Sunil now to introduce himself? Sunil, you're on mute. Yeah, good morning, good afternoon to all. Uh, my name is Sunil Nehabdukun. I'm the founder of 24 Ventures and Group Limited. Uh, I'm an entrepreneur, investor, uh, businessman, uh, we have funded, seeded, started uh, businesses in uh, shipping, commodities, um, funded businesses in security, technology, real estate, property management, um, and uh, the luxury magazine. Uh, I started working at the age of uh, 17 with uh, you know, just a garage and a small capital base. And uh, today, across the group, we have uh, six active operating companies in technology, security, loss prevention, and the IoT space. Uh, happy to be here. Happy to meet everyone. And look forward to this session. Thank you. Thank you, Sunil. Uh, may I ask Sashi now? So, Sunil, you're in Delhi. Ganesh, you're in Bangalore, just to round that up. And Sashi, you're in Philadelphia at 6.45 in the morning. Thank you for waking up so early for us. Please introduce yourself. <laughs> Fine, I'm up and awake. So, um, uh, my name is Sashi Reddy. Um, I run an early stage uh, venture fund called Free Capital. Uh, we invest mainly in uh, enterprise software, deep tech. Uh, I'm really startups that are building tech in India, selling to the US market, the ventures in the US, and can help these companies in the US. Prior to starting Free Capital, I'm an active angel investor, and prior to that, uh, I've been an entrepreneur. Uh, uh, and I ha had uh, like two exits with uh, enterprise uh, tech companies, um, and I'm really happy to be here, Jim. Thank you. Uh, welcome, Sashi. And now let's go to London, Bhaskar. You're on mute, Bhaskar. Yeah. Uh, thanks, Jayesh. Uh... My name is Bhaskar Majumdar. I am the founder and managing partner of uh, Unicorn India Ventures. We are an early stage VC, uh, investing primarily in uh, UK and in India. Uh, most of the investments we have is in the space of uh, digitization of platforms and digital platforms is a big theme that we do. Uh, we are right now in our third fund. Prior to starting the venture, uh, the Unicorn India Ventures, I've been twice exited entrepreneur. Once I exited a business to a Providence Equity Partners and then earlier on to Verizon. And very happy to be in the session here, Jesh. Welcome, Pascal. And last but not the least, Bin from Ho Chi Minh City. Thanks, Jay, for having me. Uh, my name is Bin Tran. I'm the general partner for 500 Stars Vietnam. Uh, we're betting on the growth of Southeast Asia, and, and we invest in companies both inside Vietnam as well as outside Vietnam uh, with the Vietnam Nexus. Uh, prior to being an investor, I had uh, built a venture-backed company, Big Data, an analytics company in Silicon Valley, had an exit in 2014. And uh, by sheer luck, luck moved my family uh, to Vietnam about four days before the first 
diagnosed case was discovered here. So, uh, and it looks like, uh, this country has, uh, done its citizens very well. So, uh, very lucky to be here and happy to be on this panel. Okay. Welcome. So let's just launch straight into this. I'm just going to make a few opening remarks and then really look forward to the panel members to make their thesis comments. So uh, just first quick broad strokes in 2019, the total funding raised by tech startups in India across 766 deals was about $12.7 billion, which was a 15% increasing increase from 2018. So that's sort of how broad the market was. The, the, the funding investment uh, dollars were uh, last year. Investors invested more in funded startups, which were better poised for growth. Early, early stage startups saw less funding, both in terms of number of startups funded and the total amount funded at seed stage. Uh, fintech was at the top of the chart, followed by enterprise tech, e-commerce, consumer tech, and health tech, rounding up the top five sectors. This was the data from last year. So according to a 100x.vc India sentiment outlook survey done in second quarter of 2020, last quarter, 45% of founders in India said that the VC response time has slowed down considerably. Angel investors and VCs surveyed 64% are worried and changing their strategy, mostly tied to, tied to recovery of economy. Also, 75% of them see lower valuations sought by founders in 2020. 91% uh, of investors surveyed say that they will delay investing in early stage startups. Basically, Wait and watch more. 87% of them are looking at industries that are positively impacted by the current crisis. So there is a shift uh, in the investment lens. Uh, so just to sort of make a note that Amazon, eBay, Yahoo, they were all started in 2000. And uh, new startups like Uber, WhatsApp, Airbnb, Slack were incorporated in 2002, 2008, 2009 crisis. So the theory is that great businesses start in adversity, started in adversity and flourish in good times. The top three sectors, according to the survey, uh, are healthcare, edtech, and agritech. So that's basically just setting the stage. Now, if I can uh, just get each of my panel members to take a couple, three minutes and, uh, you know, just set your thesis. Let's start with Ganesh. You're on mute, Ganesh. Yeah, sorry about that. Yeah. Uh, thanks for that, Jayesh. As you were reeling through the numbers, you know, I was thinking maybe I should I should look at numbers more carefully and become more cautious uh, for the for the coming year 18 months but um, i guess the nature of what all of us do here is probably uh, balance caution with optimism and uh, there's no better time than this to do that um in in terms of um, maybe i'll make you know uh, uh, three uh, sort of opening come uh, opening points uh, and then of course we can get into it more as we go you know through the discussion I think first and foremost, uh, uh, you know, if you look across our portfolio and, and we have coverage of 13 countries now, and like I said, India is front and center. I, I think it's still too early in, in uh, pretty much all of our countries, including India, of course, to be able to, um, you know, call the market yet, in, in, you know, so to say. I think uh, there is obviously eagerness and, and, and uh, in some cases, impatience to, be, to sort of get going. Um, a part of it is, or a large part of it is also because we have probably two and a half times more private capital today than we had in 2008-9 when the crisis happened. So there is capital. And I think uh, even though the, the basic laws of, uh, you know, of, of crisis do apply, I think when there is a lot of capital waiting on the sidelines, the markets are likely to come back faster than we think. So I think, I think nothing is as bad or as good as it looks. And that's that's you know that's kind of generally my outlook to this, especially with the kind of capital uh, waiting around. So the second is uh, if if you put that in context uh, for India, uh, I think uh, we are uh, you know if, for example March and April we were very cautious. Uh, the number of new opportunities we had put on the uh, 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 you know sort of on the on the sidelines, and uh, come May uh, things have started picking up. In the last four or five weeks, we have seen a lot more activity. I mean we are looking at about half a dozen new opportunities as we speak and uh, we have we are in the process of signing our first remote deal this week you know all done in 45 days we, we haven't even done normal deals usually in 45 days i mean it just doesn't happen so so something is working i don't think there's a sustainable mode but i do see a lot more promise than uh, than the challenges uh, you know facing us in the midst of this crisis and the third point is i i, I do agree with you that we will start seeing some very interesting 
newer trends emerge i don't call them necessarily sectors it's still again in my view early but uh, but generally themes like you know if we especially take financial services and the adjacencies of financial services that we invest in and we do a lot in adjacencies like commerce and finance agri and finance mobility and finance healthcare and finance so on and so forth we'll already starting to see several interesting you know platform solutions like banking as a platform insurance as a platform kind of solutions come up adopt adopt adoption of digital payments agri which you already agri type which you already mentioned uh, jay so there are multiple themes we are already starting to see emerge uh, it, th- those still a sort of early days but i think the 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 broader point or the uh, broad, broader aspect there is uh, more importantly there were several trends which existed for years but they are getting accelerated a lot more rapidly now like you know i have the largest banks in india telling me there is no way to go but digitization we don't have a choice a kodak kodak mahindra by kodak bank launched video kyc uh, in the midst of covid i mean it's a, it's a it's a technology we have had for years now 6 7 years but in the midst of covid video kyc has got launched and all our portfolio companies are now doing video kyc by the way the tech tech was in the issue it was the adoption acceptance by the ecosystem and acceptance by customer so in several uh, small and big ways we are trying to see different trends being adopted uh which 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 were just facing resistance uh, over the last uh, past several years so so yeah maybe that that's a little bit more of a hopeful note but i do see uh, you know promise in what we are seeing around us in the midst of this uh thank you thank you ganesh uh i think that we might have lost sunil here he's trying to catch us back on so can i request bhaskar now if you can go next please yeah uh from my perspective uh, we are seeing uh, a whole slew of new type of deals that are starting to come into fray uh, as i said earlier because we per se believe in the digitization of processes i think from our perspective you know covid indeed has been uh, uh, the biggest inflection point in lot of industries like ganesh said you know we also actively invest in fintech you know we are starting to see deals which were uh, you know within our existing portfolio companies who've been talking to some of the large banks and not making much progress suddenly today they are seeing uh, you know fast forwarding the whole processes another area which is obviously uh, where we have couple of investments which is seeing a very strong growth forward is in the whole area of cyber security because suddenly today companies have realized that working from home is a is very much possible but the security systems are not capable of uh, handling that side of things so you know cyber security is another area which we are starting to see uh, strong in, uh, strong uh, growth in similarly simple we have a very early stage business which is in the area of uh, you know iot enabled locks again something which is seen a big traction during these days of covid because everyone is talking about contactless less touch and feel and all of this areas from our perspective uh, i think uh, a point which all of us will reiterate is all the vcs and the entrepreneurs have gone in and taken the right steps that they need to do to survive these times in the short term in the next couple of quarters there will be cash flow issues and i guess all entrepreneurs and vcs have done what they have to do to uh, ensure the short time bump goes away but going forward in fact i think from our perspective it's going to be a a a a very good run we are investing like ganesh said we are of course we've just raised the uh, uh, we've done a first close of our third fund so we are in a position to invest and during the last uh, you know two months or so we've made two investments and a third one we'll be doing all in a matter of 45 days to uh, two months and getting used to due diligence remote due diligence and going ahead with things okay good uh, so so business continues uh, sunil welcome back can i request you to please go next oh uh, yes uh, <clears throat> i um, uh, taking forward uh, from both uh, ganesh and uh, sashi um, while funding may not freeze uh, totally uh, coming back to the thesis said by the by horaces Uh, my view is certainly that there will be a dip and as the data that you so adequately gave uh, you know the dip has been substantial uh, as per my numbers it's down almost 70% uh, q on q uh, in the last 6 uh, months itself and we don't have the 
data from April and May uh, as yet. Now, VCs, uh, you know, obviously the funding, uh, they're going to be looking at, uh, you know, better deals. There's going to be, a, I, I'm presuming, uh, an underlying current of uh, cash conservation and uh, looking at the best uh, opportunities available in the market. Uh, I think that what we'll really see a bounce back in the sector is if the government of India introduces similar steps like the United States uh, Treasury introduced where they have, I think they've pumped in probably 25% of the GDP already into the economy, both in the hands of consumers, small business and uh, medium and small enterprise as well as startups. And, uh, and it's looking like another $2.9 trillion. Uh, so that you're, you're basically looking at 40, 42% of the mm -hmm. GDP of the United States in liquidity back in the system. So if the government does look at some sort of measure with the Indian context, uh, I think that will definitely see, uh, uh, you know, a big bounce back uh, in the sector. Coming to the sectors which I see uh, echoing some of the voices already uh, we heard on uh, the panel, health tech and prevent preventive tech would be some sectors which are of uh, great interest uh, uh, to us and what we're looking at very seriously. Uh, personal safety and well-being. I think personal safety and uh, safety of your uh, both your life as well as your surroundings is something that's going to be on the mind of uh, most people. Um, intelligent automation uh, used for hygiene, for example, in QSRs, uh, automated uh, automated food, uh, you know, production, touchless uh, systems, agri-tech and safe foods, uh, where, uh, you know, organic is a bit, is a term which is uh, a bit overused in my view, but safe foods, uh, foods which are safer for you, less human touch, and of course, low uh, lead content and, you know, less use of pesticides, fungicides, etc. And of course, like uh, Ganesh also mentioned, cyber security, cyber defense uh, systems, mainly on the defensive side, cyber intelligence, where you're protecting your networks. We see an increase of demand in SOC and NOC uh, centers across even uh, MSMEs who were not even thinking uh, on this platform. Uh, so these are the sectors which uh, I personally and my board personally believe will, uh, which have been COVID resistant uh, and have grown during this uh, period. Where VCs are concerned, I think there's a lot more uh, VCs can do than just uh, cash. Cash, of course, is the main component, but uh, VCs who have uh, experience and on their board, they've got uh, general management skills, uh, entrepreneurial uh, minds, you know, they can help the entrepreneurs uh, and their, invest, uh, their uh, investees in overcoming this difficult period and helping them, uh, you know, uh, someone who has experience can help them that look I've seen worse crisis this is what you need to do cost optimization improved efficiencies pivot this product look at this way for new revenues so that kind of you know consistent engagement is something that VCs could really uh, uh, take a step forward at this time uh, for their entre entrepreneurs. Okay, so Neil, thank you so much. And we'll come back to that question because that's my first topic of discussion for us. So if I can now ask uh, Sashi, maybe you can please give us a thesis. Thank you. Yeah, sure. Uh, so, you know, we uh, invest a lot in enterprise tech and our focus is uh, tech that's built in India, selling to the U.S. market. And um, what's happened in the last uh, few years, of course, is that when you're trying to do that, one of the big uh, well, issues for these Indian startups to face is the fact that they are in India while the market's in the U.S. So there's a huge thing because of the distance. Now, thanks to uh, COVID, suddenly that's not an issue anymore because even the startups in the U.S. are having to deal with distance and doing everything remotely. So we have seen a big boost in how like productive and like really effective some of our startups have been uh, working in uh, like the remote economy kind of thing. So, uh, and the other thing that we see here also is that uh, I think Indian consumption uh, will remain slow for a while. So I think uh, startups that uh, can focus and sell to the U.S. market, I think, uh, would uh, do better. So I think overall, as a fund, we are quite uh, 
excited about uh, where we are, what we invested in before, as well as what we're now looking at. So in terms of sectors, we are uh, super excited about, since we are fairly broad because we focus uh, uh, as it is on only India, US startups, uh, enterprise tech. So we are already quite focused, but uh, we like to see uh, sectors that get a boost uh, from the remote economy. So that's a big area of focus for us. Uh, and we have like a bunch of investments in that. Uh, and we're also looking actively. The second area that uh, we are quite excited about, we've not done too much in, but we're going to start to do a lot more um, is in uh, deep medicine where, uh, the, uh, where you know, things like what AI uh, impact, uh, like new discoveries on the medical side. So this uh, deep medicine sector is an area that we're very excited about. So if I had to name two sectors, it'll be like the remote economy and deep medicine. Okay, good. Thank you so much. Pin? Yeah, so, you know, part of the reason why I think a lot of investors aren't being reached, being able to be reached easily is because we've been so busy. I've been more busy than I've, than I've been in a long, long time, the last four months, really. Um, first to my communicating to my LPs and then really just helping the portfolio companies along before we can talk about new companies. And unfortunately, you got like, the last few months, a lot of folks are, are making those deep cuts and um, making some of the hardest leadership decisions that you know, entrepreneurs have had to make. So um, that's been taking a lot of time. But, you know, generally, I'm very excited. We're seeing 10 years of digital transformation happen in eight weeks. We're seeing uh, e-commerce double um, in that same amount of time. However, you know, this thing's going to end. Right. So we're long term investors. Our, our vehicles are 10 years. Sometimes, you know, they're, they're going on as 15, 17 years, right? So as a long-term investor, you have to ask yourself, you know, what changes are really temporary and what, what changes are going to be permanent long after the, that vaccine is produced? And I think a lot of the needed sectors right now are, are anchored around universal basic needs like food, healthcare, education, shelter. But there are some, some fundamental, um, I think, behavior shifts that are happened and that will continue to uh, forever be changed. Um, we're, we're, we're doing that now. We've got our conferences. This piece of software is awesome. Um, I don't know if I ever want to go to another conference again <laughs> in, 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 in real life when it opens up. Um, remote working, as, as everyone men- mentioned there, I think telemedicine is one of those, one of those behaviors where you're going to question, why did we, you know, spend an hour, go to the doctor's office, expose ourselves to germs and wait an hour because the doctor's late anyways just to get a, a, a quick prescription. So I think telemedicine is definitely going to be here to stay along with potentially grocery shopping. And one other category I think is um, forever shifted and it'll be very exciting to see how how that plays out as higher education. You know, as every school out there rushes to bring their content online, you know, as a as a student out there, if I could pay you know fifteen thousand dollars a semester for a course from say a great school like UCLA, or you know a, a you know the benchmark school like Stanford, you know who are you going to pick? And so you know higher education is going to have to start dealing with you know separating content from credentialing. So there's a big shakeup there. But there's certain things that aren't that haven't changed, right? You know, uh, the need to eat and socialize, to travel, and once that opens up at some point. Um, and so, I think I think one has to really look beyond, uh, you know, this pandemic, this crisis, and really think far out five, five, ten years. Uh, one interesting uh, stat as we talk about, you know, showing going the slow down of deals. Is that we're seeing um, Fenwick, which is a law firm in, in Silicon Valley, came out with a report a couple of days ago, saying that you know, from from March to April they actually saw an increase in deals and an increase in valuations. So I don't know what's going on there. There seems to be some kind of disconnect. Um, and one other you know hypothesis I have here is you mentioned during a downturn you're going to create some great companies and and mentioned some of those. Uh, vintages for those companies. But one of those things that you also uh, have to realize is during during 2002 to 2008, 9, you had some massive platforms 
um, and paradigm shifts happening. You had the smartphones, you had cloud computing, um, social, social media is ensuing that created, you know, just really massive, massively new behaviors. So what do we, what do we have in terms of ter- paradigm shifts now? You now one could say AI, but you know, and then that is a massive shift, but if you look at collectively, uh, 10, 15 years ago, you know, it seemed like there was more substantial. Okay, thank you. Uh, so let's just jump into where you left off, Bin. Uh, there are two parts to this conversation, right? So one is all your existing portfolio companies and your current fund. And then the second is deal flow and valuation. So we'll split it into two parts. But let's just jump first because it says strengthening VC capabilities. And I think uh, what's on Frank's mind is uh, how are your portfolio companies doing now and how are you handling them? So, you know, whoever wants to go first, if, if there are issues in your portfolio companies that you want to do a case study where you rescued someone or somebody is really going through a huge upside swing, I think that's fine. Upward swing is fine. But how are you helping those companies which are struggling? So jump in. Uh, okay, I, yeah. I, mean, I, can, I can go yeah. first. Um, so yeah, of course, when when the uh, when the crisis hit, I guess uh, there was uh, mo- there was monetary paralysis uh, across you know the ecosystem, right? And I guess when when I look back today, maybe three, four, five months down the line, depending on which part of the world um, you are in, I you know what I I have started at least um, um, uh, engaging with folks on say this is gone way beyond COVID. It's a lot bigger social, economic, psychological, business challenge now. Uh, the, the threat of COVID obviously seems to be a lot more real than COVID, which are, you know, we're, we're in terms of the, um, the, the implications it's having already across the ecosystem. So in number of portfolio companies, uh, and there are three categories that are companies which have raised probably capital in the last four, six months. Uh, even they are buckling, they were buckling down, but I think they're fine. The, com- the companies that were that had to figure out very quickly what to do is um, uh, are the ones which were planning to raise capital this year, right? And in our in our portfolio, we have number of uh, of course digital lending portfolio companies, and uh, there are number of different initiatives. But in the interest of time, I would say the most impactful one was really figuring out how to uh, generate liquidity in these companies. And liquidity came in three ways. One is, uh, of course, if existing investors sort of showed up uh, with a bridge round or whatever. In the mid, one, two is if in the midst of COVID, also you're able to raise debt capital to manage liquidity. And we have actually, in fact, one of our portfolio companies last week closed a $12 million sort of debt, uh, debt, not debt, uh, debt line. Another one is actually raised $25 million in between April and now. Uh, so those are some incredible moves, frankly. And this is all because of pre-existing relationships and number of our LPs happen to be very prolific debtors to uh, fintech companies as well. So, so that's second. And the third, of course, is uh, ensuring that, you know, again, going back to uh, the case of lending, because it's a more obvious example to use in this case, um, you have to figure out how you are smarter than, uh, than your peers or others around the, uh, around the ecosystem in collecting. So we have had portfolio companies, for example, which started with X, uh, let's say, you know, 100 bucks. And actually, because they've been able to collect better, have showed up cash. And nobody's really, uh, you know, lenders are not really doing business right now. Uh, it's down to a trickle in terms of new new lending. So they're actually able to show up cash. So the entire idea is to say, how do we really ensure that we have liquidity? I mean, everyone says, you know, if you survive this, uh, you will be, you, know, you will really come out. Um, uh, as one of the strongest players and you know I sold a company right in the middle of crisis they sold my startup to Traveler City right in the middle of crisis because frankly because of the fact that we could not show up beyond a point yeah. uh, I think luckily we had two great options but uh, but but it, it, by no no stretch would we have done it sure. I'd be glad we able to go on so I think the, the real idea is not survival only it's about survival with the ability to thrive when the market comes back and that's a very difficult thing to figure out it's easier said than done. So, sure. I think, so I think uh, Ganesh, appreciate. Uh, I think I appreciate the part there where people have been able to raise money, etc., or have debt funding. But are there any war stories amongst you where somebody was just completely crashing and there was a cash preservation problem? And how did you help them with cash preservation so that they can survive? Any one of you? Did you have a struggle? No. 
We had yeah. uh, we had one company which uh, um, uh, again in the um, in the secure tech space where uh, customers just cancelled contracts and they just uh, you know uh, sort of mothballed everything overnight. Uh, uh, you know, large projects uh, were just mothballed overnight, which included uh, uh, AI, AI as well as cyber uh, security-enabled systems across their uh, across their platforms. So the obviously the whole uh, uh, you know the whole hierarchy goes into uh, a bit of a mess because uh, I'm not afraid of lack of funding. I'm not afraid of uh, I'm not afraid of uh, lost opportunity. I'm afraid of panic. You know. Uh, so panic uh, when panic sets in, uh, will we get our salaries? What's going to happen? And the chat, 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 chat. So uh, at that time, the CEO, you know, we, we had a chat and uh, we uh, just uh, you know got it got in, into the depths of the company and uh, started removing all the uh, non-essential costs, all the elements which are not uh, revenue generating. Uh, so so actually now that company is lighter, faster. And better prepared, and they have now runway for the next six months to tide over this period, which would have probably run out in the next uh, 30 to 45 days. So I think, you know, my from my learning from that is that, you know, we will have to get our hands dirty, uh, so to speak, and not just leave it to the uh, to the entrepreneur or the professionals. Uh, uh, this is my own uh, personal view. But then uh, take an action in time, a stitch in time saves nine. Uh, hmm. philosophy. Thank you. Uh, did any of you have to uh, contemplate reallocating your amounts that you have available to say that I need to help save someone and do a bridge round versus allocating for a new deal? Did any of you have to go through that? Uh, no, Sashi? No, but, yeah. Uh, yeah. I said that's probably true across the board uh, for us. I think we looked at the entire portfolio and said, uh, you know, what is the short term impact? What's the runway? What's the longer term impact? So I think that. Uh, Thinking applied across the whole portfolio. For we looked at the whole thing at one time and then we allocated what we set aside for each of these companies based on what we know now. So, yeah. so again, no, no bloodbath. I see that all of you are as happy campers. Okay, Bin. <laughs> yeah, we had a company, uh, Etex Base, receive a term sheet uh, before COVID. They ultimately closed um, a seventy-five million dollar round, but they took a, a thirty million dollar haircut. So that was that was pretty bloody. Thirty uh, percent uh, haircut. Sorry. Uh, 30% haircut on that. Now, I think there, uh, you basically bucket your companies. Um, you know, there's obviously the ones that are positively affected, uh, but the ones that are se- severely affected, they don't, they don't have a lot of options. And so, uh, much of the advice there, um, is to pivot. You know, you can only, you can do all the defensive moves you can with cost cutting and, and cash collecting and, um, cutting of R&D, but at some point, it's so, it, it's so dreadful that they you just have to completely see what you can do from a business model or product pivot. Um, and the and one one I guess one area I wish I had more support and time for. Uh, we we tend to uh, spend a lot of time with our obviously positive companies, right? But obviously it's a this is an emotional journey for a lot of these founders, and so being able to have some kind of support, you know, that uh, not just coaching on business and, and finance, but that really that emotional support that some of these people are just going to lose, lose everything they built the last few years, you know? So, uh, building that, uh, building that capacity up, I wish I, 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 had, I wanted to spend more time on that. Okay. And, and how, so let's just flip now to the, uh, we have a very limited time now, but I just want to flip to this valuation comment also been, you made that, uh, you know, this Fenwick report said that the valuations are going up. I don't think that's across the board, right? I mean, are you having this valuation chat with the with the folks for the next round? And how are you handling that successively? I mean, everybody can just throw, okay, it's COVID, so I need 10% haircut, 20% haircut, 30% haircut. Or is it that genuinely you've got really strong reasons why you want to reset the valuation? I think we've lost Pascar, but uh, any, any one of you, Sunil, you want to go on that one? Are you having a deal right now? I think, I think, uh, I think this is sector-specific. Um, the sectors which have shown uh, resilience, strength, uh, both uh, in terms of certain sectors have grown, certain areas have grown. Like you see, agritech, uh, you know, has has grown during this period. So certain sectors are uh, COVID agnostic, is how I'd like to put it. 
and certain sectors which have shown extreme vulnerabilities uh, have definitely uh, added an element of doubt in the investor's mind, in my view. And they will be looking at, uh, but you have to have solid reasons, like you rightly said. You can't just say, you know, COVID, you've got to give a 10%, 20% haircut. It has, to, it has to be backed by data, numbers, projections, uh, recovery period, and, and the whole thing. So I, th- I think it's sector uh, sector dependent, uh, Jayesh. Okay, ask. okay. Any other comments? Uh, Sashi, yeah. Bin? Jayesh, yeah, I have a contrarian view on this, yeah. which is, I think this whole, there is a lot more talk of valuations going down than, than, than what we see in reality. And venture is sort of, you know, I keep saying this, it's a 10, 90, 90 business. There are 10% companies that 90% that, that we, we should be focusing 90% of our time on to get the best deals. And, and 90% of the investors are also chasing the same companies. So, the, the, so let's be real. The reality hasn't set in, you know, uh, we, we be honest here, the reality hasn't set in. I still see the top 5-7% uh, entrepreneurs living in some fantasy land. And by the way, the, the investors in those companies living in some, you know, some, some, some unreal world. And uh, if you look at data again and again, when the crisis happens, it hits you two, three quarters down the line. And when it hits you, there won't be capital. The most important thing right now is to ensure that you shore up capital and prepare to survive later. I don't think the reality has set in in the best companies that we want to that we all want to invest in yet. Okay, okay, good. So I'm just going to take a few questions. We got so many questions. There's no time, but I'll just take a few which are interesting. Uh, Dr. Parag wants to know: Would investors make spending on ESG mandatory for all future investments? And um, how do you see the role of CSR spending in social upliftment? So maybe Ganesh, you want to take that? Yeah, I think for us it's an easy easy answer because uh, we have several sovereign development funds as LPs. Uh, you know, impact and inclusion is integral part of our team. Uh, it's a gating factor. After that, it's like the way we would evaluate any uh, you know for profit commercial enterprise. But there is there are detailed uh, ESG and uh, impact related reporting metrics that are built into our uh, our investments. A lot of this, frankly, would be commonsensical. If you sort of, it makes sense for business, it makes sense for impact. But for us, it's pretty much integral part of it. So there is nothing really extra or additional from a COVID perspective that we are uh, we, we are exploring. Okay. Okay. Any other comments on ESG? Any of you? Are you? We good? Okay. Then we'll take the next one. This is from Darshan. He says, uh, "What are the panel's thoughts on ed tech platforms and virtual?" augmented reality solutions that enable virtual social connections, collaborating and learning. So Bin, you want to take that? Yeah. Yeah. Check out bunch.live. We have a uh, portfolio company that just really helps people connect over Sorry, gaming. Repeat, can you repeat not- that Bin? Sorry, repeat it. Sure. It's bunch. bunch okay. Live. Okay. That's a live that helps people connect over, over games, social games. So, you know, really not looking at hardcore games here. They have built in games as well as an SDK that uh, a lot of popular games are already using, but they're, they've been growing quite rapidly over the last, uh, uh, three months. And, uh, I actually use it to strengthen my relationships with my friends because I'm tired of having happy hour with them over Zoom. So, uh. Okay. Good. So, um, uh, I think we've only got time for maybe one question. Let's see, maybe we'll, we'll, we'll put in two here. So is the success of SpaceX and opening of the Indian space program to private companies making space a focus sector for VC? Sashi, you have any comments on that? Yeah, no, I think uh, that was like a huge development uh, for India, space tech, and uh, like really excited about it, long overdue. Because earlier it was all like a little bit gray as to what's allowed and what's not that's all good. Now, I think we have to see um, if there's a little bit more like proactive uh, support and reach out to Nislo and some of the other startups to make this all real. But I think um, it could be a fantastic uh, opportunity for the next 10, 15 years. Okay. And and so I've got this last one question, which actually Bhaskar would have been the right one to answer, which is on cybersecurity. But maybe one of you can help out. Uh, what is the panel's thought on investments in security and intelligence platform-based solutions? Yeah. Yes. I think, I think it's uh, uh, I think it's an absolute must, uh, especially with the transition to work from work home, work from anywhere. Uh, it, you know, it's it's clear that uh, business has continued, work has work has continued, operations teams have continued, back end technology teams have you know, uh, within within a week they've uh, set up the cloud platforms even for uh, non technology businesses. So I think this is an absolute must. And uh, investments in security and your uh, uh, cyber intelligence platforms, uh, mainly on the defensive side, 
uh, to protect your networks, to protect your data uh, are absolutely essential um, and, and a must go uh, going forward. There's, there's zero doubt uh, in my mind uh, on that whatsoever. You know, okay. we, we recently invested in a small uh, sneaker startup uh, called Sneaker Up. And uh, these are young kids and, uh, you know, they're, they're, they're talking cyber, uh, protecting their consumer data, protecting their customer data. Uh, so it's, it's, uh, it's, it's across the spectrum, you know, age okay. uh, agnostic. Uh, Sam, thank you for asking that question. Bin or Sashi or Ganesh, either any of you have the comments on that? On cyber yeah, intelligence? Uh, yeah, go ahead. Thought, which is that uh, though we see cybersecurity as being super uh, important, I just think that probably for 80% of the sector, it's not really fundable in India because I think there's too much excellent tech in the U.S. that I would say that uh, unless it's a very unique edge, I find it very hard to imagine that something can actually win uh, from India is my take on cyber. Okay, we got exactly four minutes, four of you, one minute each. Ganesh, go. Closing remarks. You're, you're on mute. You're on mute, Ganesh. Yeah, yeah, sorry for that. Yeah. Uh, closing remarks. Yeah, I think uh, I guess my closing remarks are not very different from opening, which is I think nothing is as good or as bad as it looks. Uh, I, 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 but I think the challenge right now is because of too much capital. In a very paradoxical way, there is more optimism than there should be in the private capital world. Uh, that that you know, that you know, a lot of us are still already thinking ahead of what happens, you know, after COVID. I think if we give it till end of 2020, you, you know, your question, Jayesh, on challenges and failures, we will probably have a lot more stories. And I think we need to first figure out how to how to stabilize the number of these companies and then plan for future. And I feel like we are really dabbling this paradoxical phase of on one side we are over optimistic, on the other side when you know some of the companies we are over pessimistic. So okay. it's, it's, it's confusing times. Thank you. Uh, Bhaskar, if you're live and if you can hear us, do you want to give us a comment? Okay, I think he's gone. Uh, please go. Sunil, 45 seconds. Okay, so uh, look, my view is if you, if you look back, uh, Spanish flu 1918 to 1921 and after that we had the, the roaring 20s till the crash of 29. It was eight years of you know, phenomenal growth. That's what's going to come, and India is going to be at the forefront, uh, in my view. So nothing to worry. Keep your cost low. You know, stick on it. Better times will come, and it's going to bounce back at the speed of light uh, in the coming years. That's uh, that's my calculated view, not optimism. Okay, great. Uh, ben, one minute. Sure. Um, yeah, this crisis is hitting everyone in all layers. It's going to be hard for many different folks. Um, it's going to be hard for entrepreneurs to, to fundraise. Uh, I think ultimately round sizes and valuations are going to drop. Um, ultimately, though, we are investing in a sector that isn't going away. That, that's innovation. And uh, as we've learned in this crisis, technology has become even more essential. And uh, most of that investors I know are excited about the next few years. So um, in you know, as as we invest and we, we identify the, the players, don't forget all the losers. You know, uh, take care of each other. Be kind to each other. Thank you. Sashi, closing comments. I think uh, at the start we said something about uh, that like a crisis could be like an excellent time to make investments and make money. And I was just thinking back that actually when I started my last company, App Labs, was in uh, like 2001, uh, right in the middle of the dot-com and just before September 11th. So... So I think, you know, uh, I do believe that that's in fact true. I think we'll see some amazing opportunities. Uh, so we are really excited to see what happens. Yeah, so I think uh, really good, engaging conversation. I think today, right now, because of where we are, I think entrepreneurs are the customers of VCs. And slowly, guys, you can shift back to your LPs. Right, because your LPs ultimately are the ones whom which you are answerable on your IRR. So I think when that you know switch comes, uh, you better have a good story because your LPs are right now hopefully minding their business and being quiet. But of course, after three months and six months, they're going to say, "Okay, guys, how are we doing? How are your uprounds doing, etc." So you have to obviously uh, prepare for that. Uh, but. Terrific conversations. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry that uh, we couldn't get Bhaskar's uh, comment. I think somewhere along the line, we lost him. But um, each one of you, thank you so much uh, for joining us today and for your for your engagement. Ganesh from Bangalore, thank you. Sunil from Delhi, thank you so much. Bin in uh, Ho Chi Minh City, thank you so much. 500 Startups and Sashi in Philadelphia, thank you for waking up so early in the morning and you know have a nice uh, cup of coffee. And we've got uh, you know a perfect timing, 45 minutes engaging and we had up to 40, 
Thank you. You did a, you did a great job, Jayesh. Thank you. Thank you. So 50, job, 50 people showed up from zero. So we're okay. Not bad. <laughs> Take care. Thank All you. right. We're off to the races. Thank you, guys. Bye. Take care.